I think since Julio Jones signed on with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for $6 million for a one-year deal with a couple more million in incentives, the question has been very clear. Does he still have it? Well, let's watch the film and talk about it. So right off the bat, there is something like this. We're, uh, we're going to be showing the, uh, uh, clips from the Seattle game. I, I don't know why I said we. It's just me here. Uh, One-man show. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some clips from the Seattle game. It was probably his best game from tennis when he played with Tennessee. It was also right before he went down with his first injury last year. But watch what's going to happen. So the way this play is set up to work is it's going to be a cover three zone. And he's going to cut kind of underneath where the corner is supposed to be covering deep. That's basically the, the way that this concept works. And you can see on paper how it could work and how there could be a gap for Tannehill to throw to. So if you're the Seahawks, how would you go about covering this route? What would be the thing that you would do? Well, typically what you do is you're going to have the corner, 21, on this play. He runs in and he covers up Julio Jones's route. So again, the guy who's covering deep uh, towards the offense is left. So the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, he comes a little bit further and a little bit shallower and covers Julio Jones. So that's what Jones has to avoid happening if he's going to get open. And when this play begins, you're going to kind of see that that's pretty much exactly what Julio Jones is able to do. You see how, again, he's always a threat to get beat deep, and that's kind of one of the things that's going to help Julio Jones, even if he doesn't still have it, is just the fact that he's named Julio Jones. It's going to get him some extra attention in certain aspects, but you see how he does a good job of getting the corner to still have to be going deep. Despite the fact that there is some safety help over the top, because while there's only one safety deep, he's currently on the hash marks closest towards that side of the field, so there still is safety help over the top, but you're still making sure you don't get burned deep. He's playing very far back. So then when Jones does cut over, he gets that little extra step, and that's all he needs to be able to go up and make a good catch right there. So ball sort of came out at the end there, but was was a catch, and Julio Jones hung on to it. So very good play from Jones, and that's kind of the main way that he can get open. And one thing that you have to think about is for Tampa Bay, who just needs a contributor right now, that's exactly what Julio Jones can do. I'm sure he still has, you know, some of his great traits that have made him a fantastic receiver. So even if he only has certain traits that can make him effective in certain scenarios, well, then they can just use him in those scenarios. I think something like this is another one where, again, he gets corners to be slightly out of position. Again, same concept that Seattle is doing. Seattle loves their cover three zone. You have Julio Jones. He's the one who I have circled in yellow. And again, watch what he's going to do here. Right when this play begins, you do see that Julio Jones kind of starts off as though he's going over the middle, but then starts to fake as though he's going towards the top of the screen. So towards the sideline. And for the corner, you see how if Jones does cut kind of shallower and towards the sideline, you're going to be in trouble because your hips are turned towards the middle of the field. So you kind of have no choice but to slow down. So then when Jones accelerates further deep, again, because of that little move, he's able to get just enough separation to be able to make the catch. Just that one extra half step is all he needs because he still is running very fast, uh, even last year. The speed has not really, it's probably dipped some. It doesn't seem like it's dipped that much, despite the fact that he's the, you know, the elderly age of 33. Like this next play is another good example of that, kind of that acceleration, that explosiveness that he still does possess, where what's going to happen is... Again, cover three zone Seattle is in. You see where Julio Jones is on the field. He's the one who I've circled in white. The way this play works is you have A.J. Brown, who's on the other side of the field. He's going to run a deep route, try to push the corner further deep. You then have Jones run over the middle. You run a play action, so hopefully linebackers can get out of position. You know, the deep route cover uh, takes away the safety in the corner, hopefully, Play action brings the linebackers in. Julio Jones is open over the middle. That's the way this play is supposed to work. And as you see, when it begins, you see right at this spot. So Julio Jones, again, gets to his spot well enough. But I think Seattle's doing a decent job at being prepared for this. Again, if they, the, the advantage of playing one concept all the time for Seattle is that they're really good at knowing how teams try to beat it and knowing how to adjust in that situation. You have Bobby Wagner, I think, doing a good job at playing coverage here and trying to get back, but Julio Jones knows that he just has to accelerate now and get to a spot. As you see, that's exactly what he does. He accelerates well enough to just get a big enough window for Tannehill to make that throw, and they get a decent completion there. So again, are these the highlight real level plays? Are these the, you know, Julio Jones sideline catch in Super Bowl 51? No, but they're good contribution plays that are definitely going to come in handy for Tom Brady, I'm sure. I mean, you have stuff like this, which is just, it's so small and so simple that I get why, you know, some people are going to say, and whatever, you can find other receivers who can do it. But I don't know. To me, this is impressive where it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup once again, 
Watch what happens. Right when this play begins, you see again how Jones is just not giving anything away. You see how the corner is now, you know, his hips are turned towards the middle, but look at how far off he's playing. You have a couple of yards of separation, and that's all Julio needs. Watch Julio cut over the middle, gets open, makes the catch, and is able to do a good job after the catch as well. Another one of those weird things is it seems like Julio Jones always just falls forward. Just one of those guys where it seems like he never gets stopped in his tracks. He's always falling forward. Okay, you can find examples of him getting stopped in his tracks. As, as you can everyone but this seems to do a good job of falling forward as well which hey gives you an extra couple of yards one last play will be this one this is kind of a prevent defense type situation where the first down marker is at the 27 yard line so you know a lot of separation here you basically are going to play very far off but also worth noting that since it's a third down you could uh, kick a field goal on fourth down if you can get in field goal range or you can get close enough to go for it on fourth if you want to do that we know how Mike Vrabel is not afraid to go for it on fourth down so getting close to the first down marker is still good although obviously getting the first down would be preferable you see how Julio Jones's route is on this play again you can kind of see how it can get into a gap in coverage and once again right when this play begins Jones is giving nothing away you call that the stem portion of the route it's the if there's a route tree the stem is always the same and that's what you want you want to not give anything away with the stem and he does not give anything away with the stem he now kind of starts to shift towards the right a little bit so where is he going is he going to try to run to the corner try to run towards the sideline well no he instead just turns around and you know good timing by Tannehill makes the you know he makes the catch and to get to the 30 yard line Line. that would set up a fourth down and short situation for the Titans they didn't convert on it but still it was a good play from Julio Jones to just give them that opportunity they would have had to punt otherwise so which I guess you know would have ended up being better but you get why you know at the time it felt better with Julio Jones's catch and was just an impressive play so is Julio Jones washed up I would say no I don't think that he's washed up um I think that he's been banged up these past several years and you know, you could argue what is worse, being washed up or being banged up? Uh, I think I'd rather have someone who's just, you know, had the injury history that Julio Jones has had. Because of that, it means that there is a chance that, you know, if you can get a good amount of playing time, he's still effective. I mean, obviously, you'd rather have a guy who's, you know, just doesn't have the injuries altogether, but uh, you don't get that guy for the low price that the Buccaneers got Julio Jones for, or at least the reasonable price. So you're... You're overpaying based on his last year production, but you're underpaying based on his even just two years ago production. He was on pace for 1,400 yards just two years ago, uh, and you know he was still on pace for over 1,000 yards last year if you only, if you look at his snap totals. Uh, so the reality is he just has to stay on the field, and that's the question. But again, for Tampa Bay, they'll find a way to use him. He will be an effective player for them when he's on the field, and he will be a contributor for them when he's on the field. The question is how much will he be on the field, but again... They don't need him to be on the field because you have, uh, you know, it, well, I guess, you know, if Godwin isn't ready week one, which is possible, you know, he's been practicing, but it's possible he might not be ready week one, which then he would probably get on the field. But the Buccaneers do not need, you know, right now he's probably number four on the depth chart. So that's kind of just what makes things interesting. But yeah, anyways, I'm always going to be a fan of this kind of move. It's, you know, low risk, high reward. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.